Hello, 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 and welcome back to MUFC MPB here on YouTube. My name is Brooks, and today is, of course, Friday, I believe, the 12th of April. Now, we're going to jump straight into it. Um, there's not been many revelations or insane pieces of news out today. You know, we're just coming up to the Premier League. Uh, we're just coming up to the fixture on the weekend. We've got, I believe, Bournemouth away. <coughs> um tomorrow at 5 five thirty. so there hasn't really been many things in regards of uh so many new transfers coming uh, blah 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 all of that but as you can tell by the title and as you can tell by the thumbnail as well as the tweet on the screen there has been some news regarding dan ashworth and his potential arrival at manchester united hopefully before the summer transfer window opens um just i just want to clear something up as well because there's been i've spoken to a few people not like uh journalists or anything but people just been asking me questions in general about the sporting director uh director of football or technical director really they just share the same role as in the same role but if different names where they control the recruitment where they control recommendations on crucial matters um they have some insight into the academy as well like, it won't be a thing where Dan Ashworth comes in and the whole academy gets revamped. He'll be putting his input here and there as of when he's needed. And, of course, one of the main things that they have uh, a big input in is um, appointments, staff appointments, coaches, managers, uh, players as well, which ties into recruitment. Um, so these are these are the jobs that Dan Ashworth would be coming in to, to aid. And it is why you do need someone there who kind of, kind of is best in class it, it might explain why people such as richard arnold um john murta ed woodward um they might not have been too clued up about football they might not have known too many ins and outs or they might not have been able to get uh crucial pieces of information which might have helped them get someone or or uh cut the price on all of that stuff in the hands of people that aren't really in tune with football like that compared to someone like dan ashworth you're gonna see night and day um, so this is why Manchester United and especially Sir Jim Ratcliffe um, are trying so hard to get him in as well as Jason Wilcox, um, Jean-Claude, Jean-Pierre, I think is, I, would, I could swear to God I can never get this guy's name right, um, and Omar Barada. But according to Lawton, who's writing for the Times, Sir Jim Ratcliffe has held face-to-face -face talks with the Newcastle United co-owner Amanda Staveley in a bid to reach an agreement on Dan Ashworth's move to Manchester United. Now, what I will say about this straight away is Sir Jim Ratcliffe is not going there unless he knows there is a possibility that the deal can get done before the summer. We've all been in situations where we've tried to barter for something, we've tried to get something, we've tried to just acquire something by you know, means of an exchange or money, blah, blah, blah. Everybody has a price. Some people don't have a price. It could have been a thing where um, Newcastle said... Uh, listen, you can literally pay us £500 million and we are not giving you Dan Ashworth. Obviously, that's never going to happen. But in an extreme case like that, uh, the the buyer, uh, who would be Sir Jim Ratcliffe, would just know that there's not even any point in me going to try and uh, have some biscuits and tea and sweet talk Dan Ashworth away from uh, Newcastle with the owners, blah, blah, blah. What's happened here, I think, is there's a little something there is a possibility that a, a good deal could get done because yeah we want dan ashworth i'd like dan ashworth um a lot of other fans would like dan ashworth but i wouldn't like dan ashworth if manchester united had to pay the had to pay 40 million 50 if it was something like that i'd say look hold off or go and get someone else because ashworth isn't the only sporting director in the in the world that could do a very good job at manchester united but what ratcliffe has here is a is a slither of hope um he knows that he's going there and he knows what he wants and i'm pretty sure he might know what to do might know what to say or might know what to offer um and i'm not the only person who thinks this because sam wallace um uh, via sky sports news said i expect that in the next few days or weeks there'll be official statements between both manchester united and newcastle about reaching some kind of an agreement on dan ashworth's transfer to Manchester United so it just goes straight back into what I'm saying Sir Jim Ratcliffe is going to Newcastle knowing that there is a possibility that we could get Dan Ashworth before the summer transfer window which will be massive because as I explained at the beginning of the video one of the jobs of a sporting director or a technical director or a director of football is player recruitment coaching appointments uh academy uh oversight they they they're involved in 
pretty much everything. Um, they they oversee anything to do with football at the club. Dan Ashworth isn't going to be involved in what sponsor is going to be on the sleeve or what sponsor is going to be on the billboards or all of that stuff. That's going to be down to the Glazers and all of the old people that are, well, the people that were here before the Ineos takeover. Now that Ineos is here, they are solely focused and their sole purpose is to get the football side back to where it should be, um, better than what it should be at and as quickly as possible. It's not. There's no use us... Um, <clears throat> coming here, Ineos coming in saying, okay, we might be able to get Barada this year. Um, then next year, hmm, should we go into, should we go into the market and get Jean-Claude and, hmm, Jason Wilcox is good. Let's scout him for three. They're not trying to do all of that. They need, they know what they need in place before the summer transfer window because, yes, they've got the club or they've got the percentage of the club that uh, is needed to, to make these changes. Yes, they understand that there's a time limit. It wouldn't make sense for them to come in um, <clears throat> and just take their time. Why Why would you want to take your time? We need Dan Ashworth. And it's so clear. It's so clear that there aren't there, there won't be any other candidates right now. Um, we've been told no. No by Newcastle. And so Jim Ratcliffe has said, nah, I want Ashworth. I need Ashworth at Manchester United. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get Ashworth at Manchester United. And, that, and that's something that I like. And it's something which we've seen before. Of course, we've seen Arnold and Murta. Well, I think we've seen it before. We've seen Arnold and Murta fly to Spain to talk to De Jong and talk to... And it's not happened. Hopefully, um, hopefully it won't just be uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe as well. Hopefully it will be uh, Omar Barada. As, I, I, I believe he's already started work for Manchester United. Or he starts in June or July. I can't remember. Um but I want this deal done. I need I need this deal done because, of course, there might be a few... Oh, hi, Dan. Um, Sir Jim here. How are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. How, how are the wife and kids? How, how is this and that? Oh, by the way, what do you think of... What do you think of my man that plays in Italy? It's not official work, but it's just general conversation. But Dan Ashworth obviously won't be able to um, give his dossiers and reports and have the Manchester United work email until he signs for Manchester United. It... It would be again. It would be a. It would, I believe, be a breach of contract with Newcastle to, to I guess work with Man to to work with Manchester United before we get him. But regardless, Sir Jim Ratcliffe knows that there is a possibility that we can get him and probably will get him before the summer transfer window. Now this does tie directly into this as well. Reported by Marciano Vink for ESPN Netherlands, I believe that is. Manchester United are looking for a new manager to replace Eric Ten Hag. Work is being done behind the scenes. Now, this is a bit um, makes sense and doesn't make sense. If you were listening, um, if you already knew, if you had the members' resources, then congratulations to you. But um, Dan Ashworth's role would be one of the main roles in the search in hiring a new manager and since we don't have anybody there right now or since we don't have the person that we want there right now um maybe that's why sir jim ratcliffe really wants to get dan ashworth in as soon as possible because i don't know maybe ratcliffe wants to maybe he just doesn't want ten hog but he doesn't himself know who manchester united need to get he doesn't himself know who would be the best fit for manchester united he needs the dan ashworth there as soon as possible so before the summer we can clear this up. That's not to say Dan Ashworth comes in and starts work in three weeks and Eric Ten Hag's gone in three weeks and two days. That's to say Dan Ashworth comes in three weeks and gives the right advice, advises people, uh, sends out the dossiers, read reports, con con um, liaises with Barada, uh, Pierre, um, Wilcox, uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, all, and, and to Eric Ten Hag himself. I've I've seen conflicting reports and contrasting reports saying that Eric Ten Hag is is you know he himself is looking for a, a striker and a centre back or a centre midfielder this summer. That's the news of a manager that thinks or is confident he will be in charge next season. But every day, every other day, there are you know reports that go directly against what I just said. He might not be here next season. There's a good chance he might not be here next season. But there's also a good chance he will be here. At the moment, it's all just speculation and rumors. But now that I've now that I've you know really thought about it, I don't really want to come to a conclusion, and I don't think a conclusion will be will be. Uh, I don't think we'll arrive at a conclusion until we get Dan Ashworth in. 
all of these reports, Ten Hag in, Ten Hag out, the hashtags, all, I don't think it matters until we get Dan Ashworth in. Until we get Dan Ashworth in, I'm personally not really taking these reports seriously because it's all just up in the air. It's all just rumours. It's all just Chinese whispers at the moment. But something else which could be happening in the summer, now that we get to the more exciting traditional transfer news, I am i don't know about this one. Um, reported by Gazetta, uh, Inter Milan are very interested in signing Aaron Wan-Bissaka this summer. The Italian side held talks with his agent last summer. Now, on Twitter or X since Tuesday night, which was a Champions League night, there's been a massive discourse around the quality outside of the Premier League. Um, it's long known that the Premier League is the most entertaining league in the world, but that doesn't necessarily, well, that is subjective, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the Premier League has the highest level of quality. Now, at the moment, um, Germany and Italy are the two uh, are the two countries which will uh, benefit from their European exploits, as in they will get the fifth Champions League automatic qualification spot. Right underneath, as in, I think, Atalanta, I think it's Atalanta or Roma, if one of them lose, if one of, yeah, I believe it's, I know Atalanta's involved, I don't know if it's Roma or AC, I can't remember who it is, um, but if one of them lose, then England get the fifth qualification spot for the Champions League. <clears throat> now, you might be thinking, oh, Brooks, why are you telling me this? Why is this important to me? I think it's important to highlight because it does just show that the Premier League isn't the highest level, hasn't got the highest level of quality. Like, yes, we've got City, Tottenham, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool, United, Villa, um, <coughs> Brighton. Sorry if I offended it. I'm going to put Palace in there because, you know, we love Palace. But um, we're out, we're not, we haven't got that fifth qualification spot. Apart from Manchester City, nobody's really doing well in Europe. Nobody's really done well in Europe. Uh, for for the English side since Chelsea won the Champions League. Oh, uh, no, since... Yeah, since Chelsea won the Champions League um, in 2021 against Manchester City. Now, how does this tie into wan -Bissaka? Now, I think this ties into wan -Bissaka because I personally think we should keep a rotation of wan and Diogo Dallo, um for the right-back positions and um, emergency left-back cover as well. But I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be surprised... I wouldn't really be upset if wan Saka left for Inter Milan for a club in Serie A because look at the look at the way he plays. Look at his profile. Italian teams, the the Italian players, the Italian national team have always been known for how how good they are at defending, how how good their defensive work is, the dark arts of the defending in football. Like you'll be running through a goal, Damian might fall over, and as he's fallen over. Grab your lace, VAR can't see it now. You now you've tripped and now now you've been booked for that. That's what Italians are on. Wambasaka, yeah. Put Wambasaka in Serie A. I promise you, you're gonna see the evolution of a. You're gonna see the evolution of a right back. You got someone there. Jamie Carragher said it. I've been saying it um, for a long time now. At first, it was like, yeah, hmm. but now it's like I'm confident. I I believe he's the best one-on-one -on -one defender. Uh, one on one fullback in world football, like he, you don't get past him. Inter Milan are flying at the top of Serie A right now. They are, uh, they're going to win the league. I believe they've only, con sorry, I believe they've only conceded fourteen or fifteen goals in the league this season, with a defense made up of Matteo Darmian, Bastoni, um, Demarco, who's amazing. Um, who is their keeper? It's not Jan Sommer, is it? Or is he still at uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach? Um, put wan -Bissaka, Put wan in that uh, in that right-back slot for Inter Milan. They probably concede 12 or 13 goals at this point in the season. You have someone there who locks up the right-hand side completely. He's very, very, very misunderstood in terms of his footballing ability. He's very underrated just because it's not the most orthodox style of play. Um, just because it just doesn't look the most aesthetically pleasing. But his ball retention is amazing. His first touch is amazing. He's not someone that's going to keep switching the ball. He's going to keep it. 
He's gonna keep it simple, and when it does come down to it, he can beat a man, and he can he can beat a couple a few players, and he's done it, and we've seen it. Yes, he does need to work on his end product. Yes, he does need to work on his attacking output. But given how strong he is defensively, um, I feel like he fit like a glove for Inter Milan. And look, sometimes if you love someone enough, letting them go, you know, feels right. I like Wan Bissaka. I wouldn't want to see him go to another team in the Premier League because, you know, play against him. Rashford ain't getting a, he's not getting a sniff. You're not getting a sniff down that uh, down that right hand side. But if he was to leave, um, I think going to a club like Inter Milan would would help people understand the, the the quality that he possesses, the level of player that he actually is, and and stop these Twitter trolls and these people that don't really understand uh, Wan Bissaka and and his gameplay. They they'd realize something. Wow, what you'd realize what you have right now and how good it is right now was you know i'm not talking about the whole situation i'm talking about wan Bissaka specifically you'll realize a lot if he does end up going to inter milan but that has been reported by gazetta today and another report which is something that's put a big smile on my face when i read it manchester united are working on new contracts for teenage duo kobe mainu and willie kambawala now kobe mainu 100 percent obviously Willy Kambawala, I've been 100% for a while. Of course, he had that long, long-term long injury which kept him out. Um, I think it was near a year or something. And then he came back and he's been waiting for his pa- patiently for his opportunity and he's grabbed it with both hands. Pair that with the fact that Rafael Varane's picked up, a, uh, picked up an injury. Johnny Evans is out. Um, and the performance he put in against Liverpool at Old Trafford. I think he's starting the games until the end of the season. And I think in due course... Uh, he will be rewarded with a, a respectable contract. I'm not saying give him 150 a week because that would be silly and it wouldn't happen under our, under what we've got now. But get him tied down to a long-term deal. Keep the progress coming. Keep him going because he could save you 100 million pounds in the future. He's that good and he has the potential. He's a bit of a beast. Uh, his straight line speed is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. His intelligence on the ball as well. Um, one chance in the Liverpool game, he had to make up and eat up the ground on on Darwin Nunes. And I'm going to compare this directly to the penalty that the penalty that Anthony gave away against Chelsea. Um, he didn't go around the man. He he's extremely one footed, and he tried to hook the ball inside with his left foot and caught. Was it was? It? Basically, he tried to hook the ball the wrong way. He didn't run around the man. It was poor defensive work. I guess expected from a right winger. But then you have Willy Kambuala chasing Darwin Nunes down into your own penalty area, making up all that ground and still having the presence of mind to make the right decision, avoid making contact with him and clipping him up, you know, giving away a penalty and, and getting sent off and then making the challenge, not even to give away a corner, but to, to have the ball end up in the safe hands of Andre Nana. I think that was just a glimpse. I know it was just one thing and it could have been a fluke. He could have got lucky, but the whole game he was immense he's fast he's strong he's good with his feet when the ball comes to him he, he looks like he knows what he's doing already you know as you should but he looks comfortable and confident and that's that's one thing which um hopefully will rub off on the rest of the team and and i think even having a player like kobe mainu in the squad having another one like garnacho these youngsters coming through will benefit him because he's not the first one he's not the only one he's seen the pathway from the youth teams to the first team and it it's not a it's not a Chelsea thing where it rarely, rarely happens. There's a genuine opportunity for players to get from the youth teams to the to the second team, to give to the senior team, sorry, gives these players confidence. You've got Garnacho playing out of his skin. Kobe Mine, who's demonstrating to the world what we already knew. Willie Kambawala coming through, telling people what he's all about if they didn't know him already. We've got Shea Lacey coming through. We've got Kai Rooney, 14 years old. I know, I know you've seen those clips. I know you've seen those clips, Jason. I'm going to say Jason because... I know there's a Jason watching this, but we've got a plethora of talent coming through at Carrington. And I know it might have been highlighted by that 9-1 win against Liverpool the other day for the youth team. However, Liverpool have a terrible academy. Sue me. But anyway, guys, we are coming to the end of the episode. I do just want to say, if you do enjoy these episodes, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Keep up to date with all of our latest videos and exclusive interviews on MUFC MPB. 
If you do want to follow MUFC MPB over on X, make sure you do so. Keep up to date with all the latest Manchester United news and transfer news instantly and quicker than going on YouTube. Make sure you follow myself and all of the other presenters on X. All of our links will be in the description down below. Let me know in the comment section though. This is your question from me today. Would you like would you let Aaron Wambasaka leave this summer for Inter Milan or do you want him to stay and compete with Diogo Dallo? Now that gives you something to think about. Um before our game tomorrow i will see you guys later make sure you hit that like and subscribe follow us all on uh twitter or x as it is called now and i will see you guys later thank you very much for watching and goodbye